Hey there, beer tubers. Welcome back to yet another episode of Maxwell Stars Beer Reviews. Here tonight with a beer from Scotland. I'm going to take a look at a Scotch Ale. 8% ABV. This is McEwen's Scotch Ale. Um, I think it's actually married by the parent company, uh, yeah, Charles Wells. So it's actually part of the Wells and Young umbrella. Um, it just says best before. See neck on bottle. Yeah, so it's a McEwen Scotch Ale, and this one, this particular beer, I don't really have a huge backstory on it, but it's got a bit of history for me. This beer we used to get here in New Brunswick uh, a long time ago, right actually around the time I think I started doing beer reviews, but I didn't bother going back for it uh, until after, uh, like, I didn't think about going to try and review it until I was looking for more beer, and it had already disappeared in New Brunswick. It was one of those long mainstays that, you know, we used to like, and in fact, this used to be one of my, my late fiance's favorite beers, and I can, I can still remember one night where she got really trash drunk on this stuff, and which for her meant two beers, but, uh, you know, we were both lightweights back then. Um, yeah, so, all things considered, yeah, this is one of her favorites, because it was a, uh, she liked the taste of it, and 8% uh, EBV, it's uh, no, no, no wonder why it, uh, it a little bit goes a long way. Now, I've had a lot more Scotch Ales since then, so I know a little bit more what to expect from something like this, and it's actually kind of nice to go back and try something like this again, because I've been wanting to review this beer for some time, despite the fact that I've also had a number of Wells and Young beers too, and not all of them are impressive. So let's pop the top off of this one and take a look. Got a nice red McEwen's cap. Put it in my Rickards glass, one of my old glasses from the apartment. Who knows, this glass might have even had uh, McEwen Scotch Ale before in it. So pouring that out, it's got a mocha brown head, very, 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 very carbonated appearance. Look at that, the like, I haven't even poured the whole thing out, maybe it was a sloppy pour, but look at that. So much carbonation that's filled up the top of the glass. And appearance-wise, that looks just like root beer. It almost looks like e &W root beer. The, the head, this nice foamy head with the bubbles that are disappearing quite in a hurry and making these almost craters in the surface of the, of the foam. I could probably actually fit the rest of this in there now. It looks like that sarsaparilla. Like, I, I call it a sarsaparilla, but it was actually a real good root beer, solid root beer from Nickelbrook that I had up at Chad's place a while, two weeks ago. Looking at that, that is a actual really, that's a really nice looking beer. Like as far as a Scotch Ale, I almost wonder if that's a bit darker and kind of skewing towards wee heavy territory. But it doesn't look that bad. Let's give it a sniff. Mm. So the biggest note that I get off the top of that is... Uh, I want to call it a licorice root, but it's actually this kind of weird, or dirty kind of smell. Like the, the bottom of a can, you know? Like, I mean, when I first poured it, I got this whiff of this almost clove-like kind of sweetness. And it, right now, it's kind of disappeared into the, uh, the aroma of a macro beer. But very metallic. As the hood fades, not much left of it now. That's how quick it went. It, um, a little bit more sweetness is poking up through that. For the most part... Yeah, it just smells like somewhere between the bottom of a can, a little bit very metallic kind of smell. And not much else, like sweet metal. Damn it, I was kind of hoping for a little bit of that, that sweet, that sweet clove-like smell. It almost reminds me of like a, not a pomander, but almost something that makes me think scotch for some reason. Like, not scotch, but like, like scotch whiskey or something, but like Scott, Scottish. I don't, and I don't know why. <laughs> like Scottish, Scottish toffee or something. No, let's put it down the hatch to see if it's uh, interesting. Let's give it a taste. Mm. 
Yeah. It's a... Uh, it's thinner bodied than I remember. But it has this very toffee, molasses, demerara sugar. Like a hint of almost like a wintergreen without the cooling sensation. A little sweet. Molasses, demerara sugar. Surprisingly thin. And almost, and then no warming at all in the aftertaste, like uh, you would think there would be from an 8% beer. It's actually fun, somewhat, it's not crisp, like, like very creamy smooth, but there is a certain drinkable quality to it. The carbonation, when you take a drink, even sitting out this long, has dissipated to the point where it's not flat, but... It, the carbonation's not getting in the way of you drinking the beer. It's not burning carbonation. But uh, there's just a little bit of it there, and you can tell. Mm. It almost reminds me like a like a cherry. It's like somewhere between cherry and wintergreen. And the wintergreen, I'm describing it as a mint, but there's no mint cooling flavor. There's no, like, toothpaste the aftertaste. It's just a little bit of that herbal flavor into the taste. Maybe a touch of licorice. So the smell is unremarkable. The appearance is all right. And the taste is so-so. So far, it's kind of hitting all the nails in the head for a Wells beer. It's okay. Um... I wouldn't necessarily call it a good, a super good scotch ale because I would expect a much bit more of a uniform, clean, uh, yet nice and malty flavor. Uh, but this one, it's okay. It's definitely serviceable. And I don't know. It's interesting to try it again after all these years. But even back when I first had it the first time, if it was under the same Wells umbrella, it would have been around the time the first time I had uh, um, uh, the ch double chocolate stout. And I remember the chocolate stout going through phases where it was good, but you had to buy it fresh. Then it became not good for a while. And then it became middle of the road, decent, but not as good as it used to be when it was nice. And I think that maybe some of that down the road, down the way, was kind of uh, as a result of. Uh, of uh, changing the recipe a little to make it cheaper and have longer shelf life. And I think they've done the same thing with this thing, whereas it's not as good, not as clean, uh, sorry, not as uniform, forget cleanliness in one of these, um, but it's okay and resembles what it used to be, but not, isn't quite. And I'm only speculating on that, but based on why little I remember of drinking this beer seven years ago, Versus what I'm drinking right now, I'm drinking something that kind of reminds me of that former self. That it's not as, not what I remember. And I mean, of course, I've had over a thousand beers since then, so who knows what I can really truly say. But at the same time, it's not as good as what I remember. But it's not bad. I'm going to give that a three out of five. It's okay. I would... Try it if you want something nice. And as far as a, a beer that drinks like that, uh, that uh, that has eight percent ABV, you can hardly tell. That thing is a super deceptive beer. You could crush a few of these without even knowing, and it's still just as dangerous to drink as ever. Um, but at the same time, it wouldn't be the first Scotch ale I'd want to reach for. Say if I had like Tricare's House Ale or something available, because I would definitely jump for that. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Three out of five. Thanks for watching Maxwell Stars Beer Reviews. It's an interesting beer. We'll talk to you folks later. Cheers. Cheers.